The ceasefire, which had lasted for seven days, hung by a thread and it snapped yesterday morning. And immediately afterwards, Israel began its campaign of relentless bombings. And just in the last 24 hours, at least about 178 people have been killed. And scores of others have been very grievously injured. Now, this moment, it is difficult to predict as to where this war is headed. Now, the United States, as it has always done, has backed the Israeli side. And it has said that Hamas is responsible for ending the ceasefire. Now, the Americans have blamed Hamas for the failure to produce a list of hostages that could have helped a further extension in the truce. Hamas, on the other hand, has accused Israel and the United States of having walked out of this ceasefire and of having resorted to this campaign of relentless bombings that has worsened the humanitarian catastrophe in the Gaza Strip. الطرف الإسرائيلي يوم أمس بالليل كان واضح أنه هو يريد العودة إلى القتال جرى طرح أكثر من فكرة من قبل الوسطاء نحن تجاوبنا مع ثلاث أفكار منها ورغم ذلك الإسرائيلي كان يقول لا 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 في كل مرة now, Israel is vowed to carry on with achieving its goals in the Gaza Strip but how it wants to do it is by is, is, is still not clear because the only strategy that Israel has been using is to drop bombs on the Gaza Strip, resulting in worsening the humanitarian catastrophe and suffering of the Palestinian people. And also the country's defense minister, Yav Gallant, has told his Air Force fighter jets, fighter pilots, that Hamas only understands force and Israel will continue to bomb the Gaza Strip. כפי שאמרתי, מהיום הראשון, אני חוזר ואומר עכשיו, ארגון החמאס מבין רק כוח. אנחנו נמשיך ונקה אותו עד שנשיג את מטרות המלחמה. פירוק ארגון החמאס, שלילת יכולותיו הצבאיות והחזרתם של החטופים אל ביתם. Israel has released a video showing its resumed operations in the Gaza Strip. It says that it has struck operational command centers in the enclave and also underground sites and a military compound since the truce ended. Now, Israel also claims to have eliminated certain Hamas strongholds, strongholds within the Gaza Strip. But remember, what is happening at this moment is that Israel is carrying out bombings in some of the most densely populated areas in the Gaza Strip. There's no place that is safe in Gaza and especially southern Gaza, where Israel had been exhorting all Palestinians to flee to for safety, has now come un in the crosswise of the Israelis. The large parts of Khan Yunus city have been bombed with a campaign of intense bombardment that Israel has resorted to since yesterday morning. The scores of people have been killed in Khan Yunus. Many of them were rushed to the hospitals as they were injured very grievously in the strikes. They had to be pulled out virtually by hand from underneath the rubble. Now, Hamas has also released videos to show the launch of a few of its rudimentary drones that it has towards the Israeli army tanks in the Gaza Strip. Silent explosions were heard in Israel as some of these crude rockets that Hamas has got were fired from the Gaza Strip. Now, fighting has also resumed on the Israel-Lebanon border as well. The Israeli army has released a video to show the Israelis carrying out air bombings on certain targets that they claim were Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. According to the Lebanese state media, the Israeli shelling has resulted in deaths of three civilians in southern Lebanon immediately after the truce ended. Now, Israel has confirmed that six of the Hamas hostages are now dead. This, this is something that the Israelis have now come forth and said. Now, the army has not yet verified the death of the youngest hostage taken by Hamas, who is a 10-month-old baby, and also his family. Now, remember, Hamas had said that these Israeli hostages had been hidden in one of its tunnels, and they died because Israelis bombed that tunnel. Now, talking about the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, the White House says that it believes that Israel will allow for humanitarian aid trucks to enter into Gaza, but the number of deliveries will be reduced significantly. The United Nations, meanwhile, has said that the humanitarian aid delivery to Gaza is an unknown after the restart of the fighting. It's, it's kind of an unknown unknown. Even before 
this pause. We were able to get aid in, to do whatever we can, but it just, when fighting is going on, it makes it that much more complicated, challenging, and most importantly, dangerous for those delivering the aid and receiving the aid. And also to give us more perspective in terms of what is happening at this moment in the Gaza Strip, we're being joined by Professor John Glatzland, who is an international security expert and a professor in intelligence studies and international security, and is joining us live on the broadcast here. Now, Professor Glatzland, um, it's been 24 hours now since the fighting is resumed. The ceasefire, which had gone on for about seven days, came to an end. Now, Israel says that its intention is to try wipe out Hamas but it is doing so by dropping bombs in some of the most densely populated neighborhoods anywhere in the world. It has sparked a humanitarian catastrophe which is being made worse at this moment in the Gaza Strip. Does Israel actually have a strategy in achieving the objective that it claims that it wants to? Yeah, look, good to be with you. And it is a shocking situation. It's devilishly difficult. Um, the, of course, we need to remember that this is largely an information war. While what we're seeing on the screens is about death and destruction, the effect that I think the Hamas has always sought is for this to uh, kind of paint Israel as the ogre, as the bully, as the, as the, the perpetrator of the violence, for trying to make people forget what happened on October the 7th, um, and to rally the cause. Let's not forget Hamas prior to October the 7th was being completely marginalised. Saudi Arabia was on the cusp of doing a deal with Israel. They were almost completely isolated except for support they were getting from Iran and some moral support from Turkey. Mm -hmm. So this has been a game changer for, for Hamas. They have been very happy to, well, they've been prepared to see uh, Palestinians sacrificed essentially for the cause while the Hamas themselves have been hidden away. My, the hospitals have been used as shields. Um, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the resumption of, of, of the violence is a direct consequence of them not being prepared to give more, more right. um, uh, captives up for uh, exchange for uh, Palestinian uh, detainees uh, in Israel. Professor Blackson, uh, if I can just interject there, but Israel also has a choice in terms of how it goes after Hamas. You know, what is interesting is that a lot of the top leadership of Hamas is not even present in the Gaza Strip. So if Israel wants to go after Hamas, it should go after Hamas with precision strikes. But what we are witnessing are, are these two-ton bombs being dropped in places like Khan Yunus. And they are so densely populated, which, which is going to make things worse. The death toll is already well over 15,000. There are more than 6,000 children. Many of them do not even know that they are Palestinians who have been killed in this conflict. Is there something different that Israel that is backed by the United States can do? So, I, I, look, I'm not sure that those numbers are quite correct. We get those figures from Hamas. Hamas, let's not forget, is a terrorist organization that is bent on actually not telling the truth. Uh, so we hear reports of Hamas states uh, and we hear reports that Israel alleges. It's, it's very interesting the language that's used um, you know, to accept what Hamas says at face value. But we can at least accept what the United Nations is saying. The United Nations says that it is a humanitarian catastrophe that is playing out in the Gaza Strip. It is a humanitarian The United Nations no said question. that Gaza has become a graveyard for children. Yeah, and, and but what is Israel's options? Let's be realistic here. Israel is facing a terrorist organization that is prepared and it's comp continuing to repeat its line that it wants to exterminate the Israelis, okay? What is it to do? It was it was in a situation where they were making some rapprochement with the Hamas people from Gaza Strip who were being employed in neighbouring areas of Israel. That clearly has completely failed, uh, and no one in the neighbourhood is offering any help. So, but Professor you know, Laksal, you know this, 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 is, a, this, this brings me back out. to the question that, that I out. started with. If, if I can just put the, put the question again, the question hang that I asked was, hang on a can Israel there's, resort there's a really to these point pinpoint here. accurate strikes rather than resorting to strikes where there is enormous collateral damage? Collateral damage is a term that is used militarily for deaths yep. of innocent civilians who've got nothing to do with this war. Yeah, no, that's exactly right, which is why you've got to ask yourself, why has Hamas allowed them to be there? Why has Hamas sought to control what they're doing and where they're doing it? 
why has Hamas not continued its uh, its trade of of detainees? Now, I, I, there's no question that you can challenge Israel for the scale of the bombing and the and the use of the particular precision weapons, but it's been clear, and a lot of uh, security pundits around the world are acknowledging that you know Israel faces a challenge where it either has to get rid of Hamas or it faces a repeat of this into the future. Right. And nobody's offering to All help. Right. The United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Jordan, no one's offering a peacekeeping force to go in to help, to hold the Gaza Strip and prevent Hamas from returning to office. So what is Israel to do realistically other than to pursue Hamas? Now, there's no question, you are completely right, the scale of the bombing is, is terrible. It is absolutely shocking. Um, it's deeply disturbing for everybody. Um, but this is a war. This is a war that Hamas wanted. You know, this is this a war, is a, one would assume, on Hamas and not on the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. And one expects that Israel would use precision strikes to, in fact, target the Hamas leadership to begin with. That's, that's the least that one expects here. But, Professor, thank you very so much indeed for joining us with that perspective. We're Hamas completely out of time. Hiding amongst the and, and, and this, this is, of course, a discussion that, you know, there's that we'll continue to have. But at this moment, what is happening yeah, in no, the Gaza Strip is, is a humanitarian It's a difficult situation, situation, but no one's offering seriously to help, mate. This is the problem. Israel is largely on its own here, which is getting right. some moral support from the United States and substantial support. All right. But it is getting, it is getting a pushback from many other countries, and none of them, you know, there's faint praise from those who, would, who could actually come up with a All solution. Right. And, and that will be a key to what happened. Professor, we're completely out of time. I, I think you've heard you say thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us and getting us that perspective then. All right. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.